Blessed Mother, intercede for us that we may enter into this Mass as if it were our first Mass, our last Mass, and our only Mass. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled for thy protection, implored thy help, or saw thy intercession, was left in thee. Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. Protodamos in pace, Domini Christi. Amen. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Spirit of God dwelling with us. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Friends, we gather this morning to celebrate uh, the feast of another great saint, uh, St. Philip Neri. St. Philip Neri uh, lived in the late 16th century, uh, and so he was a part of, uh, we might say, the movement that is sometimes referred to as, uh, uh, as true Catholic reform, true reforming, um, uh, sometimes referred to as the Catholic counter-reformation, different, uh, different terminology that is used, but the point that is meant is that at a time uh, of great division arising in the church and a passion and a desire by the Holy Spirit among uh, faithful Christians to uh, to return to return our focus to what authentic Christianity is. Who is Jesus and what does it mean to follow him? Uh, and Philip Neri was one of a host of saints that the Holy Spirit rose up in that period uh, to help us to focus on Christ and to reform, to be renewed in the faith that Christ established and in the fullness of all that he gave us. So we ask him to pray for us today because we are indeed uh, in a time of renewal. We are indeed in a time in which there is need of great renewal and there is great hope that the Holy Spirit uh, is bringing that about. And so may our hearts indeed be open to the renewal that the Lord wants to bring. So brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who never cease to bestow the glory of holiness on the faithful servants you raise up for yourself, graciously grant that the Holy Spirit may kindle in us that fire with which he wonderfully filled the heart of St. Philip Neri. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Miletus, Paul had the presbyters of the church of Ephesus summoned. When they came to him, he addressed them. You know how I lived among you. The whole time from the day I came to the province of Asia, I served the Lord with all humility and with the tears and trials that came to me because of the plots of the Jews. And I did not at all shrink from telling you what was for your benefit, or from teaching you in public or in your homes. I earnestly bore witness for both Jews and Greeks to repentance before God and to faith in our Lord Jesus. But now, compelled by the Holy Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem. What will happen to me there, I do not know, except that in one city after another, the Holy Spirit had been warning me that imprisonment and hardships await me. Yet I consider life of no importance to me, 
if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to bear witness to the gospel of God's grace. But now I know that none of you to whom I preach the kingdom during my travels will ever see my face again. And so I solemnly declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you, for I did not shrink from proclaiming to you the entire plan of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. A bountiful rain you showered down, O God, upon your inheritance. You restore, restore the land when it languished, your flock settled in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided it for, your, for the needy. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Blessed day by day be the Lord who bears our burdens, God who is our salvation. God is a saving God for us. The Lord, my, my Lord, controls the passageways of death. Sing to God, kingdoms of the earth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your son so that your son may glorify you. Just as you give him authority over all people so that your son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of this world. They belonged to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the word you gave me, to me I have given to them. And they accepted them, and they truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine. And I have been glorified in them, and now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world, while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so we come to this point in the last week of Easter in which we are reading kind of parallel stories of, of farewell, farewell addresses on the part of uh, Paul to, uh, to actually members of the church in Ephesus, although in Miletus. I said yesterday that only we, only, although we only uh, read one small part uh, of his time in Ephesus. His time in Ephesus was very significant and important. And one of the pieces of evidence in that is that the moment in which he gives his great farewell speech uh, in the next chapter, in chapter 20, what does he do? He summons his old friends from Ephesus, the leaders of the church in Ephesus. And he addresses the uh, this sort of farewell speech primarily to them. And it, it's not as if he's going um, to his death right now, but he knows, he knows that, as he said, they will not see his face again, and he knows that he is beginning down the path that will lead to his eventual martyrdom. And that path will take time, and the Lord will continue to do much good through him between the moment of this speech and the moment of his martyrdom. And so, uh, there is a long path ahead. And similarly, as our Lord is preparing his apostles for the ascension and for the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, for the fact that they will be given the Holy Spirit such that he will be alive in them and they will carry on his mission, or rather he will carry on his mission 
in them. He's preparing them for this, but quite a while before it happens. He's preparing them for this as he's about to begin to set the works in motion. As I've uh, talked about before, that he he does this all this whole state process of preparing them before he goes to the cross, right? Because ultimately the Last Supper is the beginning of the Paschal mystery, just as the Eucharist is our participation in the Paschal mystery. He unites us to himself before he goes to the cross, before he goes into the grave, before he comes forth from the grave, and before he goes forth to the Father, because we are to go with him. We are to be alive in him. And so if that is the case, we have to be willing to die in him. We have to be willing to lay down our lives and give everything, as we see the example of St. Paul. And of course, we have also today the great example of St. Philip Neri, right? Just as both our Lord and Paul are inviting their respective disciples to, in a sense, go back to the beginning and realize what the point of all this was in the first place, right? Uh, and that, and the reason why they have uh, started them on this difficult path, what was the point of it all? Right? The point uh, was Christ restoring humanity to the Father, right? And so Philip Neri was, uh, as I said in, at the introduction, was... Um, alive in a time when what much restoration and renewal was needed. Um, and, and in the midst of that desire for restoration and desire for renewal, a lot of confusion and a lot of division uh, was, was brought about. And so thanks be to God that the Lord raised up, in, especially in that 16th century, great saints like Philip Neri, Ignatius of Loyola, Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, Charles Borromeo, uh, all of these great reformers, uh, Robert Bellarmine, all of these great reformers that helped us to understand what the point of all it was, all of it was in the first place. I still remember a, a phrase that when I was wrestling to uh, understand my faith when I was a, a youth, when I was uh, still barely a teenager and um, and, and I, I'll admit that my mom used this phrase with me as she would sort of try and uh, persuade me to remain in the church. And, and I was very much on, on the fence about that, to say the least. Um, and, and she would use this phrase that at the time really bothered me. Uh, but over the time, over time, I've uh, seen the beauty of it. And that is that we not throw out the baby with the bathwater. Perhaps you've heard that phrase, perhaps you've used that phrase. And the 16th century was a time in which there was great need for renewal and restoration and, and reform. And many people born of a great deal of confusion were kind of tempted to do just that. And many did, that they threw out a lot of what our Lord gave us um, rather than embracing true reform. Uh, which goes, which does what? Goes back to the form, goes back to the plan that Christ established, right? Um, and so ultimately, um, what strikes me about Philip Neri, I mean, there are, there's a lot we could talk about about Philip Neri. Um, of course, we often mention his, uh, that he was known for having a great sense of humor and, um, and that, uh, that part of appreciating the incarnation is, um, is appreciating the good in our humanity. And I think part of what, what comes with that is or can be a sense of humor like Philip Neri had. Um, but, but that ultimately, that he is known as the apostle of Rome or the apostle to Rome. Now think about this. The apostle to Rome, the one who was sent to carry the gospel to Rome in the 16th century. Well, we might think... Um, Rome didn't, like, wasn't waiting to receive the gospel. Rome had not never heard the gospel before. Like, what, what's the deal with that? Rome was, Rome at that point was already sort of known as Catholic headquarters, right? <laughs> so how does it make sense that in the 16th century that we could have one who is called to be the apostle to Rome, one who would carry the gospel to Rome? 
Well, it's not that Rome had completely forgotten the gospel, right? Uh, but that he was, as such, he was an apostle of renewal, renewing and helping us to come back to the beginning and understand what the point of all this was in the first place. And so part of his mission, part of what he felt called to do and, and did do was to help pilgrims to Rome, to understand what is the purpose of all this stuff. One can walk around a church in Rome with its, with its big, beautiful architecture and be amazed and have their hearts lifted to God. But they can also walk around and wonder, what is the point of all this? And they can start to wonder, why? Why all of this? What, what does this have to do with the gospel? But it all does have a meaning. It all does have a purpose. It all is in the service of the glory of God and the salvation of souls. And so part of what Philip wanted to do was to help pilgrims to Rome to come there not to be tourists, but to be pilgrims who would do what? He wanted to help them do what? What does that mean? It essentially means that he wanted to help them not only to understand the why all of this is, when we look at all, all that it makes up the Catholic Church and we wonder why, why this, why that? Well, part of the understanding of why is born out through experience that we let these things do their job. What is their job? That they are to be means of encountering God. He wanted to help people to encounter Jesus Christ in the church and to develop a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ according to this glorious plan that he established. And so Philip truly is an apostle of renewal. And I think he's one that, uh, that we need to really ask to pray for us today, that particularly as we have had many of, the, um, many of the contents of what our faith contains sort of temporarily, in a sense, taken away, that, uh, that our participation in them has been limited and delayed, right? Uh, and that we're in a beginning the process of now being able to gradually enter back in. Let's really pray that 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 does its work on us, right? To really convert and transform our hearts. And let's really pray this for our whole parish, our whole broader community, our whole the whole church worldwide. That the process of reopening, if you will, that the process of entering back in that we might enter in with the spirit of a pilgrim first stepping foot in St. Peter's Basilica and wondering at all of this, wondering it anew, even, even though perhaps we've, we've grown up surrounded by it, even two months of being separated from it can cause us to enter in like the first time all over again, to enter in like that pilgrim walking in and being brought to awe and wonder. Let us pray that that happens, that we have a renewal of wonder at the beauty and mystery of God's plan for his church, the beauty and mystery of how he has established that his people would be able to encounter him and walk in deeper relationship with him. So we place all of our prayers in the hands of our loving fathers. We pray for the whole church, for Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, for all the clergy and all the faithful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our community, especially any among us who may be sick, suffering, hurting in any way, that they may know the consolation of Jesus Christ crucified and the hope of his resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world. We pray for peace, justice, and respect for all human life. We continue to pray for the health and well-being of all, for wisdom and prudence and guidance for our leaders, 
and for an end to this crisis, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the peaceful repose of Esther Maloney, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all of those near and dear to our own hearts. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. With loving confidence, Heavenly Father, we entrust all of our prayers to you, trusting in your holy will, for you are good and your love endures forever. We ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. <clears throat> As we offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, we ask that by the example of St. Peter, we may always give ourselves cheerfully for the glory, the example of St. Philip, we may always give ourselves cheerfully for the glory of your name and the service of our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through our beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love, says the Lord. <clears throat> Prayer for spiritual communion. I believe that you, O Lord, are in the most holy sacrament. I love you and desire you. Come into my heart. I embrace you. Oh, never leave me. May the burning and most sweet power of your love, O oh Jesus, absorb my being and make me holy. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O oh Lord, that in imitation of St. Philip, we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the closing blessing, a couple quick announcements. Um, so the, the day looks beautiful today, and it looks like it will stay that way for, for a while, thanks be to God. So, um, uh, so I'll be distributing communion beginning 11.15. Um, I know yesterday's decision to cancel was was disappointing, um, and uh, some may have questions about the um, the sort of uh, protocol that I'm putting into place to make a decision a half hour before mass. That has to do with uh, the importance of getting the word out so people can make a decision before they come to the church and to our grounds. And experience has shown that a number of people do come before the Mass starts uh, or during the Mass, which I don't necessarily recommend being uh, travel, traveling during the Mass. Um, but um, so, um, and, and ultimately that if we do have a situation like we had much of yesterday, admittedly, disappointingly, not during the period of time in which uh, communion would have taken place. Um, as, I, as I've said always, we can't really predict what's going to happen. We can just do our best to try to make an informed decision, uh, which is what I did. Um, and, um, uh, but yeah, so that having been said, in, in, in the event that we do have um, a heavy storm with lightning, especially very close lightning strikes, like we had parts of yesterday, um, the pavilion would not be the safest place to be. Um, and so, um, so it would be important that we make that call uh, and that we try to get the word out if it seems prudent to do so. Um, I, I welcome your feedback. Um, if there's a significant number, uh, really significant, um, that, uh, that would rather I push back the decision, um, I'm open to that. Uh, but um, as I said, I've got, we've got to do the best we can to, um, to, to make an informed decision and to get the word out as soon as we can. So that's what motivated yesterday's decision. Um, also, um, uh, an announcement about uh, reconciliation. Uh, that, as I said, the weather looks looks to be to be good until eh, maybe later tonight. We'll see. Never can predict. Anyway, um, we are going to start something new that we might have started yesterday if the um, if the situation had been different. Um, that um, we are going to move the standard reconciliation, not the time. The time will still be 3 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then. 2.30 p.m. on Saturday, but we will move the location to the pavilion. Um, so I will sit um, in the, on the, on the bench, sort of behind where I distribute communion from, and the penitent, and this is important, the penitent is to be, is to sit socially distant from me, okay? Um, that, so they are not to be at the same table. They are to be at the next table over either in front of me or behind me. Sitting behind me, of course, would be the confidential option, the behind the screen option, if you will. Uh, but I will sit turned facing one definite direction uh, so that you can either sit in front of me at the next table across 
or behind me at the next table across. Uh, so we will begin that at three o'clock today. Um, and I, I think, um, yeah, I think, I think that'll go well. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.